Hello, Divi Nation, and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna show you three helpful ways to use Divi's overflow options in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve, so without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is to create a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here to Pages, click on Add New, and then we're gonna give this page a title. Now, since we're doing some examples on overflows. I'm just gonna call this Divi's overflow options and then click on use Divi Builder. However, you can use any page title that you want for your project. Next, I'm gonna come over here and click on build from scratch. And then we're just gonna close this for now because we need to go into the section settings to add some padding. So I'm gonna click here on design spacing and we are going to add a padding of 12 VW. And this is gonna be applied to both sides. So I'm gonna save that. Now let's go into the row settings. So I'm gonna click here, add a single column. And then I'm gonna go into the row settings by clicking this gear icon. This will take me into my row settings. So here, what we need to do is to set our width. So I'm gonna click here on design sizing. So for our width, we're gonna set this to 80 VW. And for the maximum width, we're also gonna save this as 80 VW. Now it's time to add a box shadow. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to box shadow and then choose the second option. And then for the box shadow blur strength, I'm gonna set this to 80 pixels. All right, so now you can see it's not as prominent. So pretty much we're done here on the row settings. So let's go ahead and save. Now the next stage is to add a text module. So I'm gonna come over here, click this plus button and search for my text module and select it. So here we need to add a title. So I'm just gonna highlight all this, delete it, and then add my title. And my title is gonna be Overflow. Now here we need to set this to Heading 2. So I'm gonna highlight it, click on this drop down, and set it to Heading 2. Now let's go ahead and customize this text. So I'm gonna click here on Design, Heading Text, Heading 2. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to set my font to Leto. So I'm gonna search for it. And this is a free font, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now on the weight, we're gonna set this to bold. So I'm gonna click here on this drop down, choose bold, make it all caps. And then on the alignment, we're gonna center it. Next, we're gonna add our text color. So I'm gonna click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my value in here. Now, if you wanna use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's go ahead now and add our text size. So here it's set at 26 pixels, but we want this to be 15 VW. Now for our letter spacing, I'm also gonna change this and add it as 0.1 EM. Now let's head over here to our text shadow. So the option I'm gonna go with is this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And I also need to add my shadow color. So again, the colors I'm going to use in this tutorial, I will leave a link in the show notes below so you can go ahead and use the exact same values. All right, so over here on the uh, heading to shadow, I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and between these brackets, I'm gonna add my values for my color. All right, so now that I've added all this, this is looking great now. Now we need to make the text overflow. So the first thing we're gonna do is to add a margin to the top. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing. In fact, we need to go to spacing. So margin top, we're gonna to set this to minus six VW. And then on the left and right, we're gonna set this to minus 10 VW. Add this to the left as well. And now you can see we've applied our overflow. And then let's save for now. So the next stage is to add another text module here, just below our title. So I'm gonna click on this plus button search for my text module and select it. So first of all, I'm just gonna get rid of some of this text. And then I'm also going to add a title to this. So I'm just gonna paste my title here. It's gonna be called design. And we need to set this to heading three. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to heading three. Now let's head over here to the design tab and start making all our changes. So I'm gonna start with my normal text font. So I'm gonna come over here and set my alignment to right. So for my text size, I'm gonna set this to 24 pixels. And for the line height, it's gonna be 1.3. Now, as you can see, the width of this text area here is way too much, so we need to go in and adjust that. So to do that, we're gonna come over here to sizing. I'm just gonna scroll down. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our maximum width to 50%. So I'm just gonna enter it here manually. And now for the module alignments, we want this to be aligned all the way here to the right. So we're gonna choose this option here. 
And as you can see, my text here is way too close to the edge here. So we need to make sure we add some padding to the right to give it some breathing space. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and for our padding right, I'm going to set this to 4VW. And now you can see we have a bit of breathing space. So pretty much we're done here with our settings. The next stage is to add an image over here. So I'm going to come in and click this plus button and search for my image module. I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to upload my image. So my image is somewhere on my computer. So I'm going to click on select files. And here's my image here. Great. So I'm going to click upload an image. So as you can see, my image here is way too big. So let's go ahead and adjust it. So I'm going to come over here to sizing. And I'm going to set my width to 35VW. So I'm going to paste it in here. Now I'm going to start adding my margins. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So I'm going to start with my margin top and set this to minus 12VW. And then I'm also going to um, set my bottom margin. And this is going to be 8VW. So I'm going to paste it in here as well. And we can see here now that we have this overflow. So we're not done yet because we still need to add a minus 5VW as well. So I'm going to come over here. And this needs to go on the left. I'm going to paste it. Now it's time to add a box shadow. So I'm going to come over here. And the option I'm going to go with is this one right here. I'm going to select it. And then now it's time to customize it. So I'm going to start with my horizontal position. And I'm going to set this to a minus 40 pixels. And for the vertical position, I'm going to set this to minus 50. Now let's go in and add our shadow color. So I'm going to scroll down here, click on this eyedropper tool. And I'm going to paste my values between the brackets. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. And then finally, we're going to save. All right, so this is our final design. Right, so the next step now in our next example is to design this with the rows set to overflow hidden. So instead of just redesigning all this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this and work on the bottom design. All right, so here what we can do now is go on the, into the row settings. And then what we want to do here is click on advanced visibility. And then over here on the horizontal overflow, we want to set this to hidden. And notice what happens. So now everything now is within this row. So we also want to do the vertical overflow. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to hidden as well. And notice what happens here on the top. So I'm just going to save this. Right, so let's move on to our next example. So here we're going to add a brand new section. So I'm going to click this plus button and this is going to be a regular single column. And in that single column, we're going to add a text module. I'm going to select it. And here I've got some uh, text which I've just copied from the blog post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So I'm just going to paste it here. And as you can see, it has all our styling all in place. Now let's just go ahead and make a few customizations. I'm going to click here on design text and we're going to change this text font to Lato. We are also going to change the text color. So I'm going to come over here and set it to this gray, this dark gray. And then uh, we also need to change my uh, text size to 18 pixels. So I'm just going to add it here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change this link color. So to do that, we're going to click on this tab here. And this now gives me the ability to change my links. So the color I'm going to add is a dark gray. So I'm just going to come over here and paste my color like that. Next, I'm also going to stylize my ordered list. So I'm going to come over here. Now I can also change my ordered list text color. So I'm going to just choose uh, this color right here. And then I'm also going to change my text size and set this to 20. So I'm going to set this to 20 right here. And my line height, I'm going to set this to 1.8. Now here on ordered list type, I'm going to set this to decimal leading zero. Now let's set our heading font. So as you can see here, it's pretty much uh, similar to what we have here on the normal text. So I'm going to click on this brush tool on the heading on the heading um, settings. And then I'm going to come over here and set my fonts. So first of all, I'm going to set my font weights to ultra bold. And for the size, we're going to set this to 50 pixels. And then we're going to set our maximum width. So I'm going to come over here to sizing. So for our max width, I'm going to set it to 500. Now let's add some padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So with our padding, I'm going to set 3% to the top and bottom. And I'm also going to set... 8% uh, to the left and the right. So now our content here has some breathing space. So pretty much this is how it looks. 
So what we may want to do over here is to add a box shadow as well. And now you can see this is what it's even better now. You can see how it stands out with the box shadow. All right, so uh, the strength here, I think I may as well change this to about 80% uh, because it's a bit too strong. All right, so now that we have this in place, let's add our maximum height on this so that we can add our overflow. So I am going to come over here to sizing and for our maximum height, we are going to set this at 400 pixels. So now, as you can see, this is going to be our maximum height and all our text now is outside this rectangle. Now, what we need to do to add our overflow is to come over here to advanced. Then we want to click on visibility and change our overflow to scroll. Everything can be scrolled once we save this page over here to the right. So let me just save this and show you my final design. So I'm gonna save the page and then exit the visual builder. So now when we come to this particular design, you can see when, you, when I add my mouse over here, I can actually scroll and see the rest of the content. Now let's go back and enable the visual builder because now it's time to do the example number three where we're using overflow to scroll and allow users to scroll through content horizontally. So to start our design, we need to click on this plus button and add a regular section. And in that regular section, we're going to have a single column. And then we're going to add a blurb to this column. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. It's gonna switch over here to the visual tab. So let's start right away with our design here. So I'm gonna go in and add an icon. So I'm gonna change this from an image to an icon by just activating this. And then over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose my icon that I need to use. So the icon I'm gonna go with is, I'm just gonna go with this cloud. And then I'm gonna come over here to design text and then on the text alignment, I need to make sure everything is all centered. Now I'm gonna go in and start adjusting my text. So I'm gonna start here with my title. So I'm gonna click on this brush tool. So over here on the default font, we need to set this to Leto. And we're also going to change our font weights to heavy. Now for the padding, we need to come over here to spacing. And here we need to add 3% to the left and the right. So I'm gonna manually enter it and then click on this button here. I mean, on this chain icon to apply the same amount to both sides. Now here on the icon, I'm just gonna make a few changes to this. So I'm gonna come back over here to image and icon. And uh, we're going to give this icon a background color. So, to do that, I'm gonna come over here and say circle icon, okay? Now over here on the top, we're gonna to give this icon a color. And then we're just gonna play around with the colors here and um, make it really light. Okay, so there we go. And if the size of this is way, is way too big, you can always come over here to use icon font size and then reduce the size a little bit, just like that. So I think I'm gonna go with uh, 40 pixels. Now that we've uh, made these settings, the next stage is to duplicate this five times. So I'm gonna save this and then I'm just gonna duplicate this five times. Okay, so now that we've uh, added our duplication, so the next stage now is to add some CSS code to adjust our grid to make it horizontal. So I'm gonna click here on this column settings, advanced, custom CSS, and then on the main element, I'm gonna paste the CSS code. Now this CSS code I've just pasted allows us to add our blurbs as, I mean, in horizontal, as you can see here. So as you can see, the rest of my modules is cut off. So this is where now we need to add our scroll. So I'm gonna come over here to visibility and then on the horizontal overflow, I'm gonna click on this drop down and choose scroll. So what's gonna happen now is I'll be able now to go in and scroll on the bottom here horizontally and show the rest of these blurbs. So let me save here and let's take a look at this. So I'm gonna save the page and exit the visual builder. All right, so all the way to the bottom here, we can see we have these two that are showing by default, but the moment we start scrolling, you can see now I have my scroll bar and I can see the rest of my blurbs. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.